Oh, God. How do people put the dry powder, like, straight into their mouth? Hey, everyone. I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome back to Abby's Kitchen. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, and today we're going to be reviewing as Leah Williams, What I Eat in a Day. But first I want to chat about my sponsor Squarespace because I do know that a lot of people are thinking about starting new projects and new careers this year. And in 2021, a website is kind of key. So if you're not familiar, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform where you can build a website, blog, online store, or just use their marketing tools and analytics. They have so many awesome features that are perfect for new entrepreneurs. So you can connect your site to all your social media accounts to make sharing content super easy. And they also have some awesome blogging tools that I often recommend to a lot of the bloggers that I coach. Honestly, I really wish that this kind of support was available when I started blogging like a decade ago because it would have saved me so much time and money. You can check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Abby Sharp to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. And quickly, you can check out my disclaimer here on the screen. So feel free to pause the video to read it or check it out in the description below, including a trigger warning. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring that little bell so that you never miss out on an episode. All right, so based on your feedback and also for my own attempt at work-life balance, um, I'm keeping these videos short and sweet when I can. So I'm gonna be trying a slightly different format here that brings it back to basics and allows me to talk not only about the good and not so good wellness influencers out there, um, but also put my dietitian hat on to discuss gentle nutrition and give some tangible eating tips. I'm also filming this well in advance to give myself and my editing team some much needed time off during the holidays. So please do excuse if this what I eat in a day is not as Leah's most recent. This one was actually posted mid-November, so we are working with the most up-to-date information that we have at the time of filming. Alrighty, let's get into it. I just like to eat a more filling and fueling breakfast because while working out, I get hungry really easily. So I have some eggs out. I got some sausage. These are the Johnsonville original recipe. I just get the regular one. I got some yogurt out, which doesn't really need to be out right now, but it's fine. So for bagels, I really like these by the brand Dave's Killer Bread. These are their cinnamon raisin remix bagels. And I love these because they have protein in them. They have 11 grams of protein in one bagel. So this is like normally, you know, what I like to eat in the morning. I make finish it all I may only finish half I may finish you know 75% it just depends on the day and I just eat until I feel like I'm done once the eggs are like 95% done I just kind of mix the sausage in there and call it a day literally all I do is I cut the sausage into soup into super tiny pieces Ugh, how is she cutting those sausages with those nails I would for sure cut something off and something that I actually wanted to keep like a finger something that I need it is but a scratch a scratch? This definitely looks like a pretty solid meal, which she does say is pretty important on days that she's working out. Otherwise, she might get hungry halfway through her workout. I love that she knows her body and she also trusts it to tell her when she's had enough as she specifically says that, you know, hey, she might eat half of it or she might eat all of it. She just eats until she feels done. That, my friends, is intuitive eating at its best. So even though this may seem like a lot of food for breakfast for a lot of you watching, and there is just under a thousand calories right here, if Aslia is eating in response to her hunger cues, it's probably the right amount for her. As for macros, assuming that she eats it all, we've got in 47 grams of protein in this meal alone from the eggs, the Dave's Killer bread, the sausages, the cheese, and the yogurt. She's also got some fat in the butter, cheese, and sausages, and carbs in the bread and yogurt. Now, I would say that if she wanted to balance this out a little bit and boost up the fiber, she could cut back on the saturated fat by swapping half of the sausage for maybe some fruit 
or even some plant-based source of fat like avocado. Let's see what else she has to say. All right guys, so it's now been maybe like 25, 30 minutes and I'm pretty much done. I literally finished everything other than this little piece of my bagel. I finished my yogurt, but the bagel at this point, since it's been sitting out for so long, it's just like dry and chewy now. So we're just gonna take a little pass on that. I'm literally full. Like my stomach feels full, which is exactly how I like to go to the gym because the gym is like a 20, 25 minute drive. So by the time I get there, like my stomach is perfectly filled for a workout. Okay, amazing. Um, again, this girl just knows how to tune into her cues. And she also knows the benefit of slowing down to enjoy her meal and eat it more mindfully. So trying to take a solid 30 minutes to enjoy a meal is actually a really great way to help train your brain to figure out exactly what your body needs to eat. Man, what I would give for like a quiet, peaceful, 30 minutes to eat because honestly motherhood has me eating often like this <laughs> no but seriously we do know that it can take about 20 minutes or so for your stomach to communicate those fullness signals to your brain and so many of us myself included whip through a meal before that can really happen so she also mentions that she knows that while she feels pretty full right now after 30 more minutes when she starts working out, she's gonna be at the perfect state of satiety for her activity. So it sounds like Azlia is really good at collecting dietary data, both retroactive and current, to help determine how much she needs to eat before something like a workout. I'm going to be, you know, taking this pre-workout again that I shared with you guys in my last vlog. This is in the flavor Breezeberry. I'm very much excited. Not gonna lie, like, I feel like my stomach is already starting to get hungry again. But the good thing about this pre-workout, I don't know, for me personally, I feel like it kind of brings my blood sugar up. Okay, so I take a scoop and a half because I'm really not addicted to caffeine like that, but nothing caffeine-related, like, does it for me, no matter how long of a break I take. Oh my God, I, mm, mm, I just, I can't with putting dry powder straight into my mouth that I see these influencers do. I feel, I feel like I'm choking a little bit on my saliva just like thinking about it. Yeah, but anyways, different strokes for different folks if that's how you wanna take your pre-workout. But this pre-workout is pretty standard stuff. I looked it up. Um, it's mainly like caffeine with some L-citrulline, beta-alanine, L-tyrosine, and L-theanine. So basically it's designed to give you a boost of energy to help give you that like extra little push when you're in the gym. And we do have some research to support L-citrulline, beta-alanine, and caffeine for activity enhancement, um, L-tyrosine for responding to stressors like exercise, and also a combination of caffeine and theanine for their synergistic effect on promoting cognition and attention. Now, these effects aren't a lot more significant than what you'd get from caffeine alone, but if Azlia finds that it helps her get the most out of her workout, I don't really think that it hurts. I do, however, want to note that a pre-workout supplement like this does not raise your blood sugars as, as Leah suggests. There's actually no carbs in it. It does give you a jolt of energy thanks to the 200 milligrams of caffeine, which is the equivalent of one to two cups of coffee. So that might be the sensation that she's experiencing, but it should not replace food if you're hungry or carbs if your blood sugars are low. Anyways, let's take a look at her post-workout lunch. All right, so as far as what I'm eating, we need some bread, whatever type of bread you want. I have this whole wheat bread, and to be honest with you, I didn't even mean to get whole wheat. I wanted to get like the butter bread, but I accidentally got this. Along with that, oh, some banana peppers. Ooh, I'm gonna drink some coconut water in the process just because. But along with that, I need, oh, mayonnaise. Got my avocado, oh, olive oil mayonnaise. Looks like it'd be avocado. And I need some tuna. I was really about to shut my camera in here. I'm gonna get two things of tuna because normally I make more than one serving. So the next time around, like when I'm hungry again or wanna make this again, like I just have leftovers to use. I'm going to eat these two sandwiches. I'm gonna eat these two sandwiches with this yogurt and you know, we'll call it a day. Okay, so first of all, I love how simple, real and accessible this meal is. In the world of YouTube and social media, it's kind of nice to see a girl just make a basic tuna sandwich with basic mayo and basic bread and not feel the need to shove 
avocado or kale into everything. But I don't know, having said that, I kind of would have liked to see some avocado or kale or spinach or tomatoes or salad or cucumbers or honestly, any vegetable. Now, as far as post-workout fuel goes, yeah, like this is pretty much exactly what we want to aim for. We've got a solid amount of lean protein from the tuna, plus carbs in the bread and yogurt, and a little bit of fat in the mayo. But we could definitely do with a little more veggies or fruit. Let's take a peek at dinner. So set that aside. I put my pasta in the pot. I add my pasta water, which some pasta had actually like gotten to the cup, but it's whatever. And then I add my shrimp and my pesto. This is what it looks like. And then I just mixed it together and that's pretty much it. All right guys, so I just finished making my food. This is my pesto pasta completed. I just shredded like some fresh Parmesan on top, but I am so excited to eat this. And I'm also eating my meal along with some white crayon strawberry juice. So another really simple and fuss-free meal. We've got lots of protein from the chickpea pasta and shrimp, plus carbs in the pasta as well, and some fat in the pesto. Now, I would say again, however, that we're missing out on that produce. And no, that white cranberry strawberry juice doesn't really count in my books. Now, while there is some real juice in it, and of course, lots of vitamin C, the second ingredient after water before any fruit at all is sugar. So you're getting 23 grams of added sugar and not a whole lot else. Now for the same amount of calories as the juice, she could have two cups of fresh strawberries, which would supply vitamin C plus fiber. I would also suggest throwing a handful of frozen greens in there, or she could add some zucchini pasta to just kind of like beef up that chickpea pasta. Again, I so appreciate the simplicity of this meal and also that there doesn't seem to be any explicit demonizing of foods or food groups. But for the sake of getting in all those little micronutrients and antioxidants, we could definitely do with a little bit more veg. All right, folks, let's talk about Aslia's day, starting with these stats. And of course, trigger warning, I'm about to talk numbers, so you can of course skip ahead if that's not supportive for you. So in this day, Asley is consuming around 2,500 calories with 24% of those calories from protein, 36% from carbs, and 40% from fat. So while the fat is higher and the carbs are a little bit lower than what is traditionally recommended, I think that this is a pretty common and on-trend way to eat right now. And it's not like she's completely keto or eliminating carbs or food groups or anything like that. So if this feels good to Aslia and helps her stay satiated and energized, Amazing. This totally works great for me. Now let's talk about what I like here. So first of all, I love how easygoing and laid back she is about food. Her meals are approachable and accessible and easy and fast, exactly how I assume that most busy people actually eat. So it's really refreshing to see an influencer put themselves and their meals out there exactly as they are. No filters, no stylized B-roll, no expensive, hard to find ingredients. I also love that she's actually eating enough for a busy, active young woman, which is not something that I can confidently say for most people that I review on this channel. And also that we're seeing some really awesome variety in her meals with different kinds of proteins, carbs, and fats. Now let's talk about some simple strategies that I think we could use to optimize those meals and snacks. First of all, considering that she is getting a solid amount of calories here, I would definitely love to see a little bit more fiber and definitely a greater breadth of micronutrients and antioxidants since her analysis suggested that she was a little bit low on actually most of the vitamins and minerals and just squeaked by on the lower end of the recommended fiber intake. Her saturated fat intake was also higher than recommended. And I think that all of these things could be mediated very simply by just focusing on one tiny little tweak, adding in more fruits and vegetables. Now, you know I'm all about adding foods, not taking foods away. So if we were to throw in a serving or two of produce at each meal or pop them in as snacks, we would likely feel satisfied enough that we would probably need less saturated fat in our day. 
So at breakfast, this could mean swapping some of that breakfast sausage for a side of berries. Um, at lunch, we could mix the tuna with avocado instead of mayonnaise, and maybe throw in some cucumber and tomatoes on that bread. And then at dinner, we could throw a few handfuls of frozen spinach or peas or something like that into the pasta. We could also round up the day with some standalone snacks like an apple, banana, or orange, or we could cut up some veggies and serve it with a plant-based dip like hummus. Lots of great ways to get in that rainbow of color and of course boost the nutrition in your day without feeling deprived. Finally, I want to close off by just briefly talking about my impressions of Aslia as an eater at first blush, clarifying that of course I do not know her personally and I'm really basing this solely from watching her channel for a week and specifically in this video. Now it seems pretty clear to me that Aslia has an intuitive and balanced relationship with food. I don't hear her talking about food in dichotomous terms, and she specifically calls out that she eats what she's hungry for and has no issue leaving the rest. You know, she eats mayo and bread and pasta and butter, all the things that are often demonized by some of her YouTube peers. And she does it all without really having a second thought. It seems like she just likes these foods and they fuel her body well, and she feels good and is assumedly in good health, period. So in conclusion, while I don't think that Azlia is the kind of YouTuber that you'd flock to for nutrition advice, since I haven't really heard her explicitly give a whole lot of it, I do think that she represents a much needed glimpse at what normal eating can be and is. And for that reason, I would give her channel a watch. All right, folks, on that note, that is all for me today. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below on who you'd like to see me review next. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.